welcome to beginning the day with God on Wednesday the 19th of October. We opened with a piece of music entitled Sun Prelude by Oli Yalo. As people make their way to work this morning so we watch the swans and we pray. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, Creator of all, to you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. This morning we continue our long journey through the book of Acts, reaching today chapter 27, and we begin to read at verse 1. When it was decided that we were to sail for Italy, they transferred Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort named Julius. Embarking on a ship of Adramitium, that was about to set sail to the ports along the coast of Asia, we put to sea, accompanied by Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica. The next day we put in at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly and allowed him to go to his friends to be cared for. Putting out to sea from there, we sailed under the lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. After we had sailed across the sea, that is off Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra in Lycia, and there the centurion found an Alexandrian ship bound for Italy and put us on board. We sailed slowly for a number of days and arrived with difficulty off Cnidus, and as the wind was against us, we sailed under the lee of Crete off Salmoni. Sailing past it with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Havens near the city of Lassia. Since much time had been lost and sailing was now dangerous, because even the fast had already gone by, Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, I can see that the voyage will be with danger and much heavy loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. Since the harbour was not suitable for spending the winter, the majority was in favour of putting to sea from there on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, where they could spend the winter. It was a harbour of Crete facing southwest and northwest. When a moderate south wind began to blow, they thought they could achieve their purpose, so they weighed anchor and began to sail past Crete close to the shore. But soon a violent wind, called the Northeaster, rushed down from Crete. Since the ship was caught and could not be turned with its head to the wind, we gave way to it and were driven. By running under the lee of a small island called Corda, we were scarcely able to get the ship's boat under control. After hoisting it up, they took measures to undergird the ship. Then, fearing that they would run on the Sirtis, they lowered the sea anchor and so were driven. We were being pounded by the storm so violently that on the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. And on the third day, with their own hands, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest raged, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul then stood up among them and said, 
Men, you should have listened to me and have not set sail from Crete, and thereby avoided this damage and loss. I urge you now to keep up your courage, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For last night there stood by me an angel of the God, to whom I belong and whom I worship. And the angel said, Do not be afraid, Paul, you must stand before the emperor. And indeed God has granted safety to all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we will have to run aground on some island. Thanks be to God. And now to this morning's reflection. Luke writes of himself in the first person in the introduction to his two-volume work, but then steps back into the shadows. He emerges later in three passages in Acts, often referred to as the we passages, chapters 16, 21, and a passage that begins in today's reading, which tells of the last stages of Paul's fateful journey to Rome. Whether or not Luke is using some literary license in relation to we, it is clear that this is a meticulous first-hand report of a sea voyage. Several of the places mentioned are today pleasant destinations for Mediterranean cruisers in summertime, but this voyage took place after Yom Kippur in the tempestuous autumn season and with winter relentlessly approaching. Following his appeal to the Emperor, Paul's case has been pre processed by the local imperial authorities, and he is now being escorted to the capital, taking a route that at first hugged the southern coast of modern-day Turkey, offering a staging post in Crete, but now pushes out into an expanse of open sea where the ship is at the mercy of dreadful seasonal storms. This is a vivid account of Paul's visionary, courageous and compassionate presence among a storm-tossed group of pagans, harking back to earlier events on Lake Galilee. But it's also a universal human story for today, because it bears witness to the experience of thousands who take to the seas in unworthy vessels, even in winter, desperate for their own fair haven. Amen. Now we join together in the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Eternal God and Father, you create and redeem us by the power of your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May you, our God, who dances with creation, plants your likeness in people and strikes the world with thunder. Send us out to fill the world with love. Amen.